Hey guys, what's going on? It's draft day. I'm so excited. This seems like it's going to be a great draft. There's a lot of storylines heading into this one. A lot of trades that could possibly be made. And yeah, I'm doing my reaction video. So I have the draft pulled up on the ESPN website on my computer right here. So I will be recording my reaction to these picks live. So you'll see my legit instant reaction as I watch Roger Goodell read off the names of these players. So I'm super excited. Like I said, it's 8.03 right now, so I'm really ready for the draft to get started. And it seems like we know the number one pick obviously is going to be Trevor Lawrence, and it seems like the number two pick is going to be Zach Wilson. And number three is really where it gets crazy with San Francisco. So like I said, I'm super excited. That's probably the third time I've said that, but I'll see you guys when the Jaguars submit their pick. Oh, also, by the way, if you want to follow me on social media, my Twitter handle is at It's Lauren Russ. My Instagram is at It's Lauren Russell. And the channel's Instagram and Twitter and TikTok and all of that is She Got Sports. Okay, here comes Goodell. The pick is finally in. Why did the Jaguars take that long? Like, literally, that was comically long for the Jaguars to make that pick. A pick we've all known for literally over a year, if not longer. It was just... That was so boring, just waiting for the pick to be in. Here we go. He's at the podium. Obviously, no surprises here. Select Trevor Lawrence. I mean, Trevor Lawrence, he's, he's really got his life together. We're the same age. He went number one overall in the draft just now. He's married. And I'm just here in my room vibes. The Jets pick is in. I'm expecting this, obviously, to be Zach Wilson, just like they said on ESPN. I don't think that's a surprise. And yeah, after this Jets pick is where, you know, we really get into the unknown. So Roger Goodell is at the podium right now, and he is going to say the name Zach Wilson. And there it is. Zach Wilson is a New York Jet. If you guys are new here, I'm a Giants fan. I live in New York, so I get both the Jets and Giants games on TV. And honestly, I'm excited to watch Zach Wilson play. I really didn't watch a ton of Jets games last year, maybe a few if they were the only thing on, the only game I had on. But listen, I'm going to be tuning into more Jets games this upcoming season because Zach Wilson, he's a really fun player to watch play. And I'm really interested to see how he plays with the Jets and how the Jets continue this rebuild. 49ers pick is in. I guess it will be Trey Lance. That's what I feel after the reports that I saw today. Here's Roger Goodell. It is Trey Lance. So those reports today were right. Trey Lance, number three overall. He's a guy who has a super high ceiling, but you know, He's going to need time to develop. He's definitely not a finished product right now. Um, he's a guy who just has so much potential though. Really, this guy has so much potential. For the 49ers, I think this is a better move for them than drafting Mac Jones. Those were the rumors like two days ago that they were gonna draft Mac Jones. But I just feel like in the NFL today, you need a quarterback that can move around. And Mac Jones, he really just passes from the pocket. Okay, so the Falcons pick is in. I think it could be Kyle Pitts or maybe Justin Fields. Okay, so the Falcons do select Kyle Pitts. I don't think this is really a surprise to anyone. Kyle Pitts is just insanely talented. A tight end who can really do it all. I mean... Who is going to match up against Kyle Pitts and be able to stop him? So the Bengals pick is in and they're obviously either going to take, or I shouldn't say obviously, they should probably either be taking Sewell or Chase. And if I had to predict one right now as Roger Goodell is walking up to the stage, I would say Sewell because, you know, it's the O-line and their wide receiver group is pretty good already. Oh my gosh, they went with Chase. Oh my gosh. Okay, Jamar Chase, obviously an outstanding wide receiver. He is really bad at nothing. He's not bad at like anything. He's outstanding. We were talking about this last night. You know, the worst Jamar Chase could be, like his floor is just like an average wide receiver one. Like that's really his floor. Like that's the worst he can be. 
and obviously his ceiling is like Hall of Fame, one of the greatest ever. Not to put too many expectations on a guy who just got drafted. Obviously Joe Burrow played with him at LSU, so Joe Burrow is probably so happy, you know, that he gets to reunite with his teammate. I don't know, maybe he still feels like, oh, we need offensive line help. I feel like in the second round, they gotta go O-line. Like, really? Like, the Bengals really gotta go O-line now. They still, that, o, that O-line still needs help. But that Bengals wide receiving group, T. Higgins, who was a rookie last year, had a great rookie year, Tyler Boyd, and now Jamar Chase, that has to be one of the best wide receiver trios in the league. That really does. So... Wow, the Bengals are going to be a fun team to watch next year, but they got to draft an offensive lineman in the second round. Wow. Okay, so now this could mean that Waddle and Smith go pretty soon now because Jamar Chase was that wide receiver one, and now that Sewell wasn't drafted, what do the Dolphins do? Hmm. This is interesting. I feel like they could go Sewell. I'll say that's my prediction now before the pick is even in. I'll say they, I'll say they go with Sewell. So I just saw a spoiler on Twitter, and that is the Dolphins are taking Jalen Waddle. And I'm kind of upset because that was the number one player I wanted my favorite team, the Giants, to draft. I didn't really think he would be there at 11, to be honest. So I'm not super upset, but, you know, I'm a little upset. He really reminded me of Odell Beckham Jr., who was my favorite player, so... But yeah, another college quarterback and college wide receiver reunited the Alabama duo of Tua and Jalen Waddell. Jalen Waddell, like I just said, he reminds me of OBJ. He's so fast. I feel like he's one of those guys, you know, like OBJ. He runs a slant route, and you know, he could take it for a touchdown. You just don't know with how fast this guy is. And like I said... When Jamar Chase got drafted by the Bengals just one pick ago, with him being drafted, with Jamar Chase being drafted at number five overall, that meant the wide receivers were going to start to get drafted. And yeah, a wide receiver was the next pick right after him. So I'm curious to see what the Lions do. I feel like they will go with Sewell. The pick is in. So yeah, that's my prediction that the Lions do draft Sewell because... The Lions are really in rebuild mode. Like, they really are. And I think it's the beginning of their rebuild, to be honest with you. This rebuild for the Lions isn't going to be over next year. <laughs> there goes Sewell. All right, so he goes number seven to the Lions. And yeah, that's a great pick for the Lions because an offensive line, we know, is so important. And this team is... Oh, his draft party looks awesome. His family looks so excited for him. That looks so awesome. But we know how important an offensive line is in football. And when you're rebuilding, you know, you want to make sure a quarterback you could possibly draft next year, you know, if they don't feel comfortable with Jared Goff. Um, I do believe the Lions might draft a quarterback next year. But if they do draft a quarterback next year, you want to have your line you know, as good as possible. So this young rookie quarterback feels safe and feels comfortable. So I think it's a good pick for the Lions because they're really at the beginning of their rebuild. So the Panthers are on the clock and I'm honestly pretty surprised we haven't seen a trade yet. Could the Panthers possibly trade this pick? They're still on the clock. There's a minute 25 left on the clock there. But Justin Fields and Mac Jones are both, you know, still not on teams. They haven't been drafted yet. Could a team like Washington possibly trade up to draft one of these guys? Or could a team like the Patriots possibly trade up to draft one of these guys? Or does Carolina draft a quarterback? They obviously did just trade for Sam Darnold, but in my opinion, Justin Fields is better than Sam Darnold. So I don't know what's going to happen. Obviously, the clock is still winding down. There's 51 seconds left on the clock. And if they don't trade the pick, my prediction will be Slater. I believe another offensive lineman goes back-to-back -back wide receivers and then back-to-back -back offensive linemen. J.C. Horn! They select J.C. Horn! He is the first cornerback off the board. I thought he was going to be the second cornerback off the board. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! That's a shock! That's the biggest shock so far! Wow! Wow!
I think JC Horn is a great player, so no disrespect to him. Like, me saying I'm surprised is no disrespect to him at all. I believe I had him going top 10 in my mock draft. I believe I had him going number 10 overall to Dallas. So, you know, I know he's a great cornerback, but I just expected him to be the number two cornerback off the board. So that's why I'm a little surprised. Denver is on the clock right now, then Dallas picks, then the Giants pick. And Jalen Waddell was the number one player I wanted the Giants to draft, but the number two player I wanted the Giants to draft was Smith. And oh my gosh, Devontae Smith. Oh my gosh, I don't want to jinx it. But Denver drafted a wide receiver in the first round last year, Jerry Judy, and Dallas drafted a wide receiver in the first round last year, CeeDee Lamb. So, I don't know, I'm nervous, but I'm getting excited, guys. I'm getting excited. Oh my gosh, I shouldn't get excited, so I don't get upset, but... Here is Goodell with the Broncos pick. I'm really interested to see what the Broncos do with this pick. I think they could go quarterback, like I said, Justin Fields, or maybe even Slater. Okay, Sertan went. Sertan went to the Broncos. Ooh, if you're a Cowboys fan, you have to be a little upset. That's who I thought was going to go to the Cowboys. Cowboys need help on that defense, especially at corner. Wow, I really thought he was gonna go to the Cowboys, but um, he goes one pick before the Cowboys. Oh my God, the Eagles just traded in front of the Giants. Oh my gosh, they're gonna, they're gonna take Smith. They're gonna take Smith. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. The Eagles really don't like the Giants. See, that was an NFC East trade against the Giants. Oh my gosh, why did they do that? No way, I can't believe this is gonna happen. I can't believe the Eagles tanked on national TV, which meant the Giants didn't make the playoffs. Yes, the Giants should have won more games, I know that. Like, it's the Giants' fault they didn't make the playoffs, but we all know if the Eagles won that game, the Giants would have made the playoffs. And now the Eagles are trading ahead of the Giants to draft Smith. I can't believe this. I literally cannot believe this. I'm in shock. I'm in literal shock. Oh my gosh. No. You have to be kidding me. This is literally a joke. This is a joke. This is a joke. I literally cannot get excited about anything with the Giants. This is a joke. This is comedy. This is comedy right here. Oh my god. I'm laughing because I'm like, this didn't just happen. This didn't just happen. <laughs> oh my God, I'm like, oh my gosh. Bruh. Here comes Roger Goodell and he's about to break my heart. Oh my gosh. Guys, I can't believe this is about to happen. I'm in shock and I'm so sad. Oh my gosh. He's announcing the trade. I literally can't believe that just happened. How did the Giants let that happen? That's bullying. The Eagles are really bullying me in 2021. Now the Giants have to play against him twice a year. Every single year. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, my friend who's an Eagles fan just texted me in all caps. Ha 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 ha. Look at that, I told you, I'm being bullied. <laughs> I can't believe this. I'm in shock. I'm in shock. I'm in shock. <laughs> it's a joke. It's a joke. It's a joke. Wow, the Eagles really just finessed the Giants. They really did. They really did. And the Cowboys were in on it too. And they're probably both laughing at us right now. I don't know why I called us the Giants. I don't play for the team or do anything for the team. I'm just a fan. But yeah, the Cowboys and Eagles are definitely laughing at the Giants right now. And then Washington is probably also there just laughing at us. The whole division is laughing at us. Guys, this is terrible. I feel so sad. See, I knew I shouldn't get my hopes up. I told you I shouldn't get my hopes up. The Giants just traded back, and I literally said before the draft, I didn't want them to trade back 
Okay, the bears are on the clock. Oh my gosh. They're trading all the way back to what? 19 or 20? Oh my gosh. I'm not having fun. I'm not having fun anymore. So Chicago has to be taking a quarterback, right? Fields or Jones? It really has to be Fields or Jones. Oh my gosh, what is happening with the Giants? <laughs> what is going on? I literally don't know what's going on. I mean, I know they traded the pick. I was going to say, literally as soon as that trade came through, I was going to say, oh, if they stay here on 11, they should draft Slater. Um, but Chicago was drafting. And um, they really moved down far in the draft. I wonder what picks they got in return, though. So, oh my gosh. Wow. What a day. So my prediction for the Bears pick is Justin Fields. And after Goodell announces the pick, I'm going to go over the Giants trade and what picks they received. They got a future first rounder, which is awesome. So actually, I'm kind of happy with the trade now. There we go. Justin Fields going to the Bears. I'm happy for Justin Fields. I really believe he is going to be a great quarterback. And yeah, I really do believe he should have gone ahead of Mac Jones. Um, I was really confused about the Mac Jones at number three rumors when people were saying that was going to happen. But yeah, Justin Fields to Chicago. I still feel like he should have gone higher than number 11, but I think he's going to have a great career. I mean that game versus Clemson where he was injured, but he came back and he still just balled out, really put the team on his back. And I don't know, I really like him and I'm just so excited to watch him play in Chicago. Okay, so let's go over this Giants trade. It's for the number 22 overall pick. For some reason, I thought the Bears had the 19th or 20th pick for some reason, I don't know. But what the Giants got in return was obviously the number 22 overall pick, the 164th pick, which I don't know what round that that's in. I'm not good at math. I literally can't tell you. A future first and a four, according to my sports update. That's what my sports update said. So I think that's a really, really good trade for the Giants. Honestly, a player I'd be looking out for at number 22 for the Giants, if he's still there, is Elijah Vera Tucker. So I was right. The Bears actually do have the 20th overall pick. I believe there was just an error in the tweet I was reading. But the Giants also get the Bears' fifth round pick this year. So a lot of picks for the Giants, and yeah, I think it's a pretty good move. Obviously, I'm still upset about Smith because I really wanted him to be a Giant. He's just so exciting to watch play. The Cowboys pick is in now, and I'll just predict that they pick Slater. That's gonna be my prediction for the Cowboys. Parsons to the Cowboys, okay. Parsons to the Cowboys. Wow, Slater really is falling in this draft. I thought he was going to be gone by number 11, but the Chargers have the next pick, and I think he has to go to the Chargers. I believe that's who I had him going to in my mock draft, though. So I don't know why I'm saying, like, oh, I'm surprised he's falling this far. But I really believed he was going to go in the top 10 earlier today. But when I created my mock draft, I guess I didn't think that. But yeah, Chargers are on the clock. Justin Herbert going into his second year. I feel like this is a no-brainer. you got to go with Slater here. So the future first-round pick, the Giants are getting from the Bears is a 2022 first round pick, which is awesome because that's obviously next year. There it is, Slater. I mean, like I said, that's a no-brainer for the Chargers. That's a great pick for the Chargers. You have to be ecstatic if you're a Chargers fan. I said this earlier this offseason, the Chargers are a sleeper playoff team for me next season, and this pick just makes them even more of a sleeper playoff team for me. They're going to be pretty good. Derwin James coming back. He was injured last season. Justin Herbert in year two. The Chargers are going to be good. The Jets just traded up. They traded to the 14th overall pick. So they traded with the Vikings. I don't really know who they're taking. Um, some people were saying before the draft that they should draft Rashad Bateman. But I don't know if they would trade up for him. Just saw a spoiler on Twitter that the Jets are drafting Elijah Vera Tucker. So that's obviously the player I was hoping would fall to the Giants, but it looks like that's not going to happen. It's a good pick for the Jets. It really is. Here comes the Patriots pick. It has to be Mac Jones, right? I actually had Mac Jones going to the Patriots at 15 in my mock. There it is. Mac Jones to the Patriots. So it actually happened. It happened. Mac Jones is a Patriot. Wow. And the Patriots didn't need a trade up. 
My big thing with Mac Jones is I don't like how he really can't move outside of the pocket and how he only just plays from the pocket. But listen, the Patriots are really used to working with a quarterback who can, you know, only throw from the pocket, a quarterback who really isn't that athletic. So yeah, I think this is a good match for Mac Jones. Collins goes to the Arizona Cardinals. I'm a little surprised he went this early, to be honest with you. Leatherwood just went to the Raiders. I kind of thought Jenkins would go before him, to be honest with you. So Jalen Phillips goes to the Dolphins. He stays in Miami. That's a player I could have seen the Giants taking at 20, an edge rusher. Obviously, the Giants need help on the edge, you know, getting to the quarterback, rushing the passer. But this is a good pick for Miami. So Washington just took Davis, and the Giants are on the clock. And I feel like the pick is going to be pay, and I think that would be awesome. You know, some mocks had the Giants drafting him at 11, I believe. I don't remember which mock drafts exactly, but you know, there had to be one where the Giants drafted pay at 11. So here is Goodell with the pick. Oh my gosh, they drafted Kadarius Tooney. Oh my gosh, I thought Rashad Bateman would be drafted ahead of Kadarius Tooney. Wow. Wow. I'm honestly just surprised. I didn't think they were going to go wide receiver in the first round after, you know, trading down. Wow. Okay. Okay. They're saying he's going to play in the slot, so I guess that means Shepard is going to play outside. Um, wow. I'm just surprised. I'm not, like, upset. I'm just surprised. I wasn't expecting them to do this. But, you know what? I'm here for it. Let's see how he plays, you know? I'm excited. I'm excited. So just watching some of his highlights, what I really like about Kadarius Tony is he seems like such a dynamic playmaker. He's someone, you know, you put the ball in his hands and you let him do the work. You know, that's different than Kenny Galladay because Kenny Galladay, he's going to go up and get the ball. You're going to throw him a deep ball down the field. He's going to jump up and get it and, you know, win that jump ball versus the defender. But, you know, Tony, he's really different than that because, you know, you're going to put the ball in his hands and he's going to run past the defender and juke out the defender. So I think it's awesome because there's going to be, you know, a lot of variety on this Giants offense. You're going to have a guy who can go up and get it and you're going to have a guy who can, you know, break another guy's ankles or break a defender's ankles. I mean, you know, just pull out a bunch of juke moves, run all around, and I feel like this Giants offense is really balanced now. 